Skeptical Inquirer is a bi-monthly American general audience magazine published by the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry CSI, with the subtitle, The Magazine for Science and Reason. In 2016 it celebrated its 40th anniversary. For most of its existence, the Skeptical Inquirer SI, was published by the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal, widely known by its acronym CSICOP. In 2006 the CSICOP Executive Council shortened CSICOP's name to the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry CSI, and broadened its mission statement. Topic. Mission Statement The formal mission statement, approved in 2006 and still current, states the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry promotes science and scientific inquiry, critical thinking, science education, and the use of reason in examining important issues. It encourages the critical investigation of controversial or extraordinary claims from a responsible, scientific point of view and disseminates factual information about the results of such inquiries to the scientific community, the media, and the public. A shorter version of the mission statement appears in every issue, promotes scientific inquiry, critical investigation, and the use of reason in examining controversial and extraordinary claims. A previous mission statement referred to investigation of paranormal and fringe science claims, but the 2006 change recognized and ratified a wider purview for SI that includes new science-related issues at the intersection of science and the public while not ignoring core topics. A history of the first two decades is available in the Encyclopedia of the Paranormal published in 1998 by SI editor Kendrick Fraser. Topic. History The magazine was originally titled The Zetetic from the Greek meaning skeptical seeker or inquiring skeptic and was originally edited by Marcello Truzzi. The first issue was dated fall, winter 1976. Soon after its inception a schism developed between the editor Truzzi and the rest of CSICOP. One side was more firmly opposed to nonsense, more willing to go on the offensive and to attack supernatural claims. And the other side wanted science and pseudoscience to exist happily together. Trutzi left to start the Zetetic Scholar and CSICOP changed the magazine's name to Skeptical Inquirer. In 1977 Kendrick Fraser was appointed editor. He had previously been editor of Science News for six years. Kurtz noted that there had been tremendous public fascination with the paranormal and it was heavily promoted and sensationalized by an irresponsible media. He stressed that our interest was not simply in the paranormal curiosity shop, but to increase an understanding of how science works. Historian Daniel Loxton speculates on the answer to the question that if CSICOP was not the first skeptical publication, why is it considered to be the birth of modern skepticism, at least for the English-speaking world. Loxton writes that it was because CSICOP organized this scholarship collectively and comprised a distinct field of study. The organization was the first to establish best practices, specialist experts, buildings, periodicals and professional writers and researchers. In the 1978 spring and summer edition, it was announced that the very next issue, Volume 3, Number 1, publication would move from semi-annual to quarterly. From 1976 to 1995 the magazine had a digest-sized format. It was agreed to change to the larger more traditional sized pages and in 1995 it was decided that in order to become more timely with its topics it would be published bi-monthly instead of quarterly. The UK magazine The Skeptic was first published in close association with SI. In 2014 the British version was handed back to the UK. Skeptics. Topic. 30th Anniversary 2006 
For the 30th anniversary of the Skeptical Inquirer in 2006, CSICOP founder Paul Kurtz listed four long-standing policies to criticize claims of the paranormal and pseudoscience, to replicate the methods of scientific inquiry and the nature of the scientific outlook, to seek a balanced view of science in the mass media, to teach critical thinking in the schools. According to Kurtz, in the first 20 years, the magazine attempted to focus on the paranormal. Solving mysteries that were outside the range of normal, frogs dropping from the sky, UFO abductions, cattle mutilations and more. Readers expected the magazine to have explanations. Kurtz states that these were exciting years, especially working with magicians who would often replicate the paranormal claim. The magazine often received criticism from the paranormal community, that they were being made fun of. Skeptical Inquirer according to Kurtz kept the focus on investigations, gathering together a network of people who excelled in research of the paranormal. Kurtz felt that interest in the paranormal was beginning to fail. One piece of evidence he used for this was that so few paranormal books were on the New York Times bestseller list that had been there years before. He suggested that SI should expand into areas that have controversy, appeal to the public, and where SI could pull from its network of people to investigate. Subjects he selected for consideration were stem cell research, cyber terrorism, biogenetic engineering, religion, economics, ethics, and politics. Some of these subjects Kurtz was happy to point out that Fraser was already exploring. Kurtz concluded his overview of the past 30 years by thanking subscribers for their financial support. The internet had caused subscriptions of print magazines to drop, and only by expanding outreach has SI been able to survive. The enduring contribution of the Skeptical Inquirer in its first three decades, I submit, has been its persistent efforts to raise the level of the public understanding of science. Paul Kurtz Topic. 40th Anniversary 2016 In a review of 40 years of organized skepticism published in 2015, Fraser wrote, We have done our best to keep aglow the light of reason and rationality and to cultivate scientific thinking in the wider public. We have critically examined thousands of individual claims and assertions, and published the results for the world to see. We have explored virtually every issue important to skeptics. We have encouraged greater skepticism in the news media and served them as a source of reliable scientific information. We have done our best to make others aware of the dangers to a democracy of all confusions between reality and fantasy, sense and nonsense, and real science and its pretenders and adversaries. Topic. Goals. Kendrick Fraser, who has edited Skeptical Inquirer since August 1977, has described the magazine as an unusual hybrid, part semi-popular magazine and part scientific and scholarly journal. He said, I think it's fair to say that we not only help to cross disciplinary barriers within scientific fields but bridge the gaps between the hard and soft sciences, between science and the humanities, between academics and non-academics, and between science and the general public. Fraser has also frequently spoken of the broader goals and higher values of skeptical inquiry that he says the skeptical inquirer tries to exemplify. We skeptics do it all, investigating the smallest strange mysteries while also explaining the powerful tools of science and reason and applying them to thinking about the broadest issues of concern and confusion in today's complex societies. Daniel Loxton writing in 2013 about the mission and goals of the skeptical movement quoted an editor of the Swedish skeptic magazine Folkvit who felt that SI was a magazine written by old white men, for old white men. He criticized the idea that people wanted to read about the paranormal, Uri Geller and Crystal Skulls not being relevant any longer. Paul Kurtz in 2009 seemed to share this sentiment and stated that the organization would still research some paranormal subjects as they have expertise in this area, but they would begin to investigate other areas, S.I. Has reached an historic juncture, the recognition that there is a critical need to change our direction.
While editor Frazier did expand the scope of the magazine to include topics less paranormal and more that were an attack on science and critical thinking such as climate change denialism, conspiracy theories and the influence of the alt-med movement, Frazier also added that, Paranormal beliefs are still widespread and quoted surveys that state that the public given a list of ten general paranormal topics will select four as a topic they believe in. While the general skeptic community believes that we should not waste more time debunking the paranormal, topics long ago discredited, Frazier says. Millions of Americans accept them today. Writing for Scientific American Douglas Hofstadter states that the purpose of Skeptical Inquirer magazine is to Combat nonsense Nonsensical claims are routinely smashed to smithereens. Quote. He writes that articles are written for everyone that can read English, no special knowledge or expertise is needed, the only requirement is Curiosity about truth Topic. Board, contributors and staff Scientists, scholars, investigators, and other experts worldwide contribute feature articles, columns, reviews, and commentaries to the magazine. CSI currently has about a hundred distinguished fellows. Notable fellows of the past, include Isaac Asimov, Martin Gardner, Stephen Jay Gould, Carl Sagan, and Nobel laureates Francis Crick and Glenn T. Seaborg. Current fellows include Neil deGrasse Tyson, Lawrence Krauss, Richard Dawkins, Jill Tarter, James Randi, Bill Nye, Eugenie Scott, Daniel Dennett, Richard Wiseman, E.O. Wilson, Elizabeth Loftus and Nobel laureate Steven Weinberg. The CSI Executive Council serves as the editorial board of the Skeptical Inquirer. Members as of April 2016 were, Kendrick Fraser, James Alcock, Harriet Hall, Ray Hyman, Scott O. Lilienfeld, Elizabeth Loftus, Stephen Novella, Amardeo Sarma, Eugenie Scott, Karen Stolznow, Dave Thomas, and Leonard Tramiel. In addition to these Executive Council members, CSI's Senior Research Fellow and SI Investigative Files columnist Joe Nickel also serves on the SI Editorial Board. CSI Executive Director Barry Carr is an ex officio member. As of April 2016, consulting editors are Susan Blackmore, Kenneth Fetter, Barry Carr, Richard Wiseman, Ed Krupp, and Jay Pasakoff. Contributing editors are DJ Grove, Harriet Hall, Kenneth Krause, David Morrison, James Oberg, Massimo Piliucci, Robert Schieffer, and Dave Thomas. Editor Kendrick Fraser. Deputy Editor Ben Radford. Managing Editor, Julia Lavarnway Assistant Editor, Nicole Scott Art Director, Christopher Fix Production, Paul E. Loins Webmaster, Matthew Licata Publisher's Representative, Barry Carr Topic Columns and Columnists Notes of a Fringe Watcher Originally titled, Notes of a Psy Watcher Martin Gardner 1983-2010 Investigative Files, Joe Nickel 1995 Present Psychic Vibrations, Robert Schieffer 1977-2017 Notes of a Strange World, Massimo Polidoro 2002 Present Thinking About Science, Massimo Piliucci 2002-2015 Skeptical Inquiry, Ben Radford 2006 Present Science Watch, Kenneth Krause 2010 Present the Science of Medicine, Stephen Novella 2010 The Science of Science Communication, Matthew Nisbet 2016 Present Behavior and Belief, Stuart Weiss 2016 Present the Last Laugh, Ian Patrick Harris 2017 Present Reality is the Best Medicine, Harriet Hall 2018 Began with Issue 42. 5. Topic. Influence. Several notable skeptics have described the influence the magazine had on them during the early stages of their development as scientific skeptics. In 1995, Perry DeAngelis and Stephen Novella were friends that played Dungeons and Dragons together until DeAngelis noticed a Skeptical Inquirer magazine on the table in Novella's condo. DeAngelis who was also an avid reader of the magazine, pointed out the back page to Novella and said, What is missing? 
DeAngelis stated that what was missing was a Connecticut skeptic group, he said. We should do this. To which Novella agreed. They started the New England Skeptical Society and eventually the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe SGU podcast. Skeptic Susan Gerbic writes that finding a Skeptical Inquirer magazine one day in the library started her on the path of critical thinking. I wish I could remember which articles were in it, but I'm sure I was intrigued by the cover art. It was probably in the very early 1980s. It was like a light bulb went off. It was like walking down a hallway and opening doors into subjects I didn't know existed. Some topics made me say to myself, people believe in that crazy thing, and other topics made me say, wait, that isn't real. Writing for Scientific American, Douglas Hofstadter asks the question, why would Skeptical Inquirer succeed when the only people who read it are people who do not believe in the paranormal? The answer, he says, lies in the back of the magazine in the letters to the editor section. Many people write in to say how vital the magazine has been to them, their friends and their students. High school teachers are among the most frequent writers of thank you notes to the magazine's editors, but I have also seen enthusiastic letters from members of the clergy, radio talk show hosts and people in many other professions. Daniel Loxton in his essay, Ode to Joy about discovering Skeptical Inquirer magazine as a freshman at his university writes. But the true treasure, the lamp at the end of the cave, the thing that helped set the course of my life, was hidden away in the periodical collection, a complete set of the Skeptical Inquirer, going back to its launch in 1976. I couldn't believe such a wealth of skeptical research existed. I worked my way through the stack systematically, hungrily. I've been thinking of that experience a lot recently. These last weeks have been a rough ride for many skeptics, as long-standing debates about the scope and tone of skepticism have collided with the decentralized, organic nature of skepticism 2.0. I care a lot about those issues, advocating often for a back-to-basics approach to skepticism. A traditional, science-based skepticism that solves mysteries and educates the public. So, I thought, why not really go back to the beginning? Why not go back to my own roots as a skeptic, reading those old back issues, and back further, to the roots of the skeptical project. The Achilles heel of skepticism 2.0 may be that new skeptics are unfamiliar with the literature. And so, these last few days I've been losing myself in skeptical inquirer issues from 1977 and 1978. I'm falling in love all over again. The directness of those early voices is inspiring, here were investigable mysteries, and by God, skeptics were going to solve them. And they did. I'm learning a great deal by looking back once again at how they worked, about how things have changed and about how they haven't. We've come a long way since 1976. Further since the days of Houdini. But we've got things to learn from those who set us on this path. Let's have another look at what those things are. Topic. Levy and Olenek Art Project Inspired by the four decades of Skeptical Inquirer magazine, the exhibition Some Provocations from Skeptical Inquirers by artists Ellen Levy and Patricia Olenek, was featured at the Baruch College Mishkin Gallery in February 2016. Reviewer Eileen Giesel writes that they plumb the depths of the murky ontological sea that is empirical belief. Reviewer states that the work represents, this built-in confrontation between fact and fiction was the basis of the skeptical inquirer itself and its playful willingness to consider the most unlikely phenomena. Topic special editions and anthologies Over the years a number of anthologies of skeptical inquirer articles have been published by permission or arrangement with CSI. Five general anthologies of SI articles have been published by Prometheus Books K. Frazier, ed., Science Under Siege, Defending Science, Exposing Pseudoscience, Prometheus Books, 2009. K. Frazier, ed., Encounters with the Paranormal, Science, Knowledge, and Belief, Prometheus Books, 1998. K. Frazier, ed. The Hundredth Monkey and Other Paradigms of the Paranormal, Prometheus Books, 1991. 
K. Frazier, ed., Science Confronts the Paranormal, Prometheus Books, 1986, K. Frazier, ed., Paranormal Borderlands of Science, Prometheus Books, 1981. In addition, Prometheus also published this special themed SI anthology K. Frazier, B. Carr, and J. Nickel, eds. The UFO Invasion, The Roswell Incident, Alien Abductions, and Government Cover-Ups Prometheus Books, 1997. In addition to these, CSICOP or CSI has also published a number of small anthologies of short SI articles, often used for subscription promotion purposes and not always widely available. The Outer Edge Ed. By J. Nickel, B. Carr, and T. Genoni, 1996 Winking Face, Bizarre Cases, No Editor Listed, 2000. In 2011, Robert Schieffer collected and republished the first two decades, 1977 to 1997, of his Psychic Vibrations columns from the Skeptical Inquirer in a self-published book titled Psychic Vibrations, Skeptical Giggles from the Skeptical Inquirer. Illustrations by Rob Pudim, also from S.I. Martin Gardner republished most if not all of his Skeptical Inquirer notes of a Fringe Watcher columns in six of his books. With many he added informative afterwards or postscripts. In most of these books the first half consisted of his most recent SI columns, the second half, his reviews and writings for other periodicals. The New Age, Notes of a Fringe Watcher, Prometheus Books, 1991. On the Wild Side, Prometheus Books, 1992. Weird Water and Fuzzy Logic, More Notes of a Fringe Watcher, Prometheus, 1996. Did Adam and Eve Have Navels? W. W. Norton, 2000. Are Universes Thicker Than Blackberries? W. W. Norton, 2003. The Gin from Hyperspace. Prometheus, 2008 A DVD-ROM was released in 2006 containing volumes 1 through 29 of SI which covers the dates fall, winter 1976 November, December 2005. Topic. More information In addition to the columns and articles, the magazine includes reviews of paranormal and skeptic books of note written by staff or guest writers. A letter to the editor section is also included. The magazine inside covers note current CSI fellows, scientific and technical consultants as well as affiliated organizations. Also listed are CFI locations worldwide. The final page features a Skeptical Anniversaries section written by Tim Farley and a carbon dating cartoon strip written and drawn by Kyle Sanders from CarbonComic.com. The Skeptical Inquirer website features more online columns and content, and an app supports online subscription or individual digital issues. Topic. Gallery. Topic. See also See Psycon Skeptic US Magazine The Skeptic UK Magazine The Skeptics Dictionary Skeptical Movement Snopes.com